Hello. We all know that in Microsoft PowerPoint you can insert text boxes and you can type in those text boxes and change the text. But what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how it's possible to play your presentation and still have text boxes that you can type in. So that students can be given this as a PowerPoint presentation for them to write in or it could be done at the front of the classroom. These are editable text boxes right on the presentation itself. And what's more, when you come out of the presentation, the answers are kept. So that that copy of the presentation can be saved as an example of what the student has done. So let me show you now in this tutorial how to create editable text boxes within a presentation. So I have on this slide a picture of a computer system and I've got my title. The picture of the computer system I've uh, sourced through Creative Commons. So that is um, a, a allowed for uh, reuse. What I need to do now to insert the text boxes is not to insert the sort of text box that you would normally within a presentation. What you'll need to do is to go to the Developer tab. Now, by default, you won't have the Developer tab. So what you'll need to do anywhere on the ribbon at the top is to right click and then go to Customize the Ribbon. That brings up on the right hand side here a list of all the possible tabs. They should all be ticked, but by default, Developer won't be. So just simply put a tick next to Developer, click OK, and you'll have this extra tab. Now the next thing we need to do is find the text box, which is this control just here. The first one's a label, but this second one here is the text box. So click that and draw it out as you would normally. Now what we'll need to do is format the text within that, but we don't do that by going to the Home tab. You'll see that if I click on this text box, the text formatting tools are all locked out. It doesn't work that way. What we need to do with this text box selected, and by the way, if you want to have, as I did, three or four or several of these text boxes, don't create lots to begin with. We create one, we get it formatted just right, then we'll copy it much, much quicker. So here's my text box then. Uh, with it selected, we go up to Properties. That's still in the Developer tool, uh, Developer tab. So click on Properties. That brings up this floating panel here. And what I generally do then is in this text panel here, this uh, text property, is just to type um, some text in there. We'll get rid of that later, just so that we can see visually what it's going to look like. Now, there are a couple of uh, things to change here. Don't worry about most of this. Um, play around with it if you want to. But the, the things that I think are important, first of all, the text align. At the moment it's aligned left, I would tend to think it looks smarter aligned center. Um, there's no align vertically centered here, but we'll increase the font size in a minute anyway, and that won't matter. Let's click on font. So up here we've got font. We click on the little dot, dot, dot button, and that brings up um, a panel here, fairly an old-fashioned panel. Even this is uh, in Office 365. It's still a bit, um, I don't think it's changed for years, this. Anyway, I'm going to choose um, Musio 700 and I'm going to choose font size 26. I'm going to click OK and now I can adjust the height of this text box so that it is about right. There we are, something like that. You'll notice how if I click off this text box, the properties available on the left hand side change. Don't worry about that. Just click on the text box again and they'll come back. Um, now there are one or two other things you might possibly want to look into. For example, the border style. Um, there are a couple of different uh, styles there. One is uh, none, which kind of creates a sort of blank floating box. But that's not very helpful because the students can't see where to click there. So I would suggest making sure that's set to style single. Border color, of course, the color of the... Um, 
uh, of, of the outline. Uh, if you click on that, you have got the system colors there, but if you click on palette, you've got uh, some friendlier, easier to use colors. Again, pretty old fashioned. Um, you can, there are ways of typing in the hex code here. Uh, if you can look up a hex code online uh, or you have a utility for that and the back color as well, similarly. That's pretty much all that you'll want to change here. That's all I'm going to worry about now. So I'm going to click on the, uh, oh, actually, before I do anything, I'm going to delete this text. I don't want that in every single text box. So simply delete that, close the properties. So that box is now fine. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it and drag that one down here somewhere. Control D again. Um, and then control D one more time so I can put these boxes where I want and the next thing that I'm going to do is add an arrow so this is just an ordinary arrow so I can go to the insert tab here go to shapes and then choose the arrow or line arrow there I'm going to click on the middle and then we're going to go over here to the power supply now that arrow doesn't look very uh, clear so I'm going to just change the color and the thickness of that line slightly and the arrow head itself um, doesn't look terribly clear so I'm going to actually choose more arrows and change the arrow end type to a circle and the arrow end size to the largest there we are. So once I've got that line set up how I want, I can press Control D to duplicate it. Drag this end down there. This end will go to the uh, CPU fan. Control D again, and we'll drag that end up there. This end up to the CD or DVD player, and then duplicate it again. So Control D each time to duplicate. And see how the arrow and the arrow head snaps quite nicely to these text boxes uh, and we'll drop that on the RAM. And that's all there is to it. Now uh, if I play this presentation, so we're now actively playing the slideshow, uh, we've got these text boxes which if I click on I can type in just like that. And again if I come out of the presentation those answers are saved. So that's how to create editable text boxes that are editable within a playing slideshow. There's a variety of ways in which we can use that. As I say, you can either have it on the board at the front of a classroom so that students can come up and type in different answers and build the presentation up themselves. It's a, a better way than just simply blasting all the answers at them uh, where they come and create the slideshow with you. Uh, alternatively, you could give the slideshow a copy of it to each student and they could then fill in those boxes as they play the presentation. Um, in a previous video I did um, just a little earlier on, I showed you how to add narration to a PowerPoint presentation. Now, if you haven't seen that video, pop and have a quick look at it because I think if you use narration with this, you've got quite a powerful tool because you can have a PowerPoint presentation playing as the student uh, watches it, they can hear your voice talking them through the exercises and then they can actually type the answers in into each box um, with you actually talking to them and taking them through. Uh, quite a powerful combination of tools. So hope you found that uh, useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. It does make a difference. And if you have any questions or any comments or any suggestions, please, please leave them in the comments section below. I do read them. I do respond to them. And sometimes I do create videos in response to those questions or comments. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. That makes a huge difference. Um, and um, then you'll be the first to know about new um I can't type and talk at the same time today, obviously. Uh, new tutorials and ideas and suggestions that you'll hopefully find useful. So uh, thank you very much indeed for watching and hope to see you in another video.